Are you ready to take your business to the next level and make the money you want so that you can create the impact you desire? Then you're in the right place. It's possible to run a successful business built around your life. Get ready for a little bit of tough love and a whole lot of strategy to grow your business without sacrificing your sanity. If you're ready to get out of your own way and step into the role of CEO, then let's go. I'm Amy Tra, and this is the Motivated CEO Podcast. Oftentimes, as entrepreneurs, we think that our most valuable assets are time being one, energy being the other, but there's one that's even more important. And in today's episode, our guest is going to unpack that for us because I must admit, I've said it before, your time and your energy, those are your two most valuable assets. But Andrea opened up my perspective even more, that there's something even more valuable than those two. And when leveraged appropriately can help you as an entrepreneur to grow and to really promote yourself to CEO. So before we dive in today, I would love to welcome in Andrea Libros. Welcome into the podcast. Thanks, Amy. Thanks for having me. I'm happy to be here. Super excited for this conversation because I've just loved your perspective and take on this. It's a game changer for so many entrepreneurs. But before we dive in, tell us more about yourself, who you are, what you do, and who you serve. So I um, I work with entrepreneurial women to really help them create more freedom of time, money, and brain power in their lives and businesses. So most people come to me with um, for business coaching, but I always say everything's fair game. So we it turns into a lot of life coaching as time goes on because we realize that our lives are, um, as entrepreneurs, our lives and our business are very much intertwined. So I really help people get through what I call the messy middle, which is kind of that place where you're in your business and Um, It comes up over and over again. It's not just a one-time occurrence, just so everybody's clear on that, but it's that place where things have been going well, you've got it going, and then uh, you feel like you're in what I call stuck stress. You can't decide what to do next. Um, Should I put time, money, or brain power towards this? Should I not? Maybe I don't have even have those resources. So how do we get through that messy middle? And in 2023, I released a book called She Thinks Big. You can find it at your favorite bookseller or on Amazon. Um, And I also have a podcast. So I have a podcast called Time to Level Up. So those are all ways in which I work with entrepreneurial women. Oh, so, so good. So let's talk about this resource that nobody is talking about. What is it? So a brain power or your ability to think I think is your most valuable resource. So I often will ask my clients that question. What do you think? What's your most valuable resource? And time comes up and first and money usually comes up second. No one really talks about the brain power part. And I like to say, hey, um, I have some news for you. Actually, some good news that your most valuable resource is your own brain power because you can use that to create and I'm putting that in air quotes, you can use that to create more time or create more money or create anything actually you really want. And if you believe that, then you, if you believe that brain power is your most valuable resource, it actually makes things a whole lot easier, a whole lot easier. Cause I say like, you know, we can talk about success or whatever that means. We could have a whole episode on that, but Really, I like to say that success just has two ingredients. It's like a secret sauce. It only has two ingredients. It's mindset and systems. And your mindset or your brain power, or whatever you're thinking about, is really 80% of the game. You do need systems. But if you create systems based on with this, if the brain that before the system, you have brain A. After the system, if you haven't really worked on your brain or your thinking, you still have brain A. So it may not make that things that much better. So you do really need to invest your time and money into your brain is, my, is kind of what it comes down to. 
That's Absolutely. Our thing about. Absolutely. Yeah. Those are two of my favorite things in the entire world, especially the systems piece. Systems are such a game changer. And I think most entrepreneurs entrepreneurs view it as it has to be this really complicated process. But what it's doing, it's freeing up your brain because when we're making all of those little decisions, when we have all this information in our brain, it takes away that brain power. I would love for you to walk us through your process of how do we start to leverage that brain power in order to save us time and energy and money at the end of the day. Right. So I think um, I created this acronym TRUST, T-R-U-S-T, and it really is what all big thinkers do. And big thinkers are really good at making decisions. So let me just give you a little bit of my thoughts on decision making too. Thanks. We if we can make a big decision, it actually makes all of the choices underneath that decision a whole lot easier. So I love to use the analogy, and I heard this from another coach, and I will give her credit, Jody Moore. She told she shared this. If you if you're married or you have a partner, and you know you've decided that that's who you're going to spend your life with, when you get invited to that holiday party and they say bring a date. You already decided who you're bringing most of the time, I hope. All right. So you made that big decision. So then it made that little choice a whole lot easier. And the same goes in business. If you can make some big decisions, which sometimes have to do with creating a process or a system, it makes the little decisions underneath a whole lot easier. So how do we do that? Or what does that really look like? So you have to, you have to, you've got to really hone in on your big thinking, which comes from future you. Okay. So past you, which we all can tell lots of stories on and kind of give, let me give you a little history. Like that's what people say, right? Okay. Whatever happened in the past, it's just a teacher. It is not a fortune teller. So even though you know yourself and that, you know, that you wait till the last minute to do everything, or, you know, that you're not the best copywriter. Okay, that doesn't mean that in the future you won't wait till the last minute or you can't get good at writing. Okay, so there's the past you, there's present you, and present you usually is pretty comfortable in whatever it is, even if it's chaos, even if it's overwhelm. It's like that's where our brain's just used to being. I call it like a happiness set point, like it's just happy living in the chaos. Okay, so present you is really not going to leverage your brain power too much either. Because, hey, leveraging your brain power, it might actually be a little hard or uncomfortable. It's definitely not efficient because you're you're thinking new things, okay? But if you go to future you, who's already succeeded, who's already, I don't know, reached your reached your revenue milestone or created, you're, all, you're taking Fridays off, whatever that is, that ask that future you what to do. That's how you have to kind of start with big thinking. You really got to go to the place of future you. And this is hard work, okay? This does not happen overnight. <laughs> you sometimes need someone else to help you get there, right? So this is kind of where visioning comes in or a little bit of dreaming. And then how do we turn that vision into action? So a lot of what I do with my clients, I call it a vision into action intensive. I help them extract that vision and then how do we turn it into action? You need to trust, okay? So this is where the trust thing comes in. The T in trust stands for thought options, okay? So I spend a significant amount of my coaching time helping people think through their thought options. And what I mean by that is you could think that, um, Okay, I'll get this morning. This happened. I'll give I love real life examples are good. So, this what client I have, she actually has um, a multiple seven figure business. She has a, it's a landscaping business. Okay. So, she, it's kind of seasonal, um, or at least in her brain, she likes to think of it as seasonal. We've been working on that. It's not really seasonal, it's a year round business. But she's ready to kind of actually start consulting other business owners in the landscape world, but she hasn't done it yet. And I, I said to her, I said, why not? She's like, well, 
I just, I don't, we, it basically, if we, when we teased it apart, she's waiting for someone to give her permission. Some mysterious person here to give her permission. She hadn't come up with the thought option or the possibility that she doesn't need permission, that she could just go do it. She's like, well, would I need more training or another degree? I'm like, no, you would not need another more training or another degree. You have tons of experience here. This isn't your first rodeo. So she hadn't thought of the thought option of, I can just do this with what I have. She hadn't thought of the thought option of, I can start doing this right now. I don't have to wait till some magical time. Her brain is focused on, there's going to be a time I need to do X, Y, and Z. So big thinkers, because this is kind of big thinking for her, recognize that they've got thought options. So that's the first thing. Second, real problem. The R in trust stands for real problem. This is another thing that I spend lots of time examining. I said to her, what's the problem of what, what's the problem? What's getting in the way here? Well, the real problem is just the, her feeling of feeling kind of insecure. So the real problem usually isn't a problem. It is literally just a negative feeling. Okay. But a lot of times we can't identify that. We think it's something external or we think it's something that someone else did or how even you did. But really what the real problem is, what gets in the way of using that brain power to create different, bigger or better things is your feelings. And the fact that you don't want to feel a negative feeling. And again, hard to tease apart, hard to tease apart, but that's really what it comes down to. Third, you ready for you? The you and trust. The you and trust stands for unknown or uncertain. And big thinkers, people that are using their brain power, are embracing the unknown or the uncertainty. Because we don't really know what's going to happen tonight. We don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. We don't know what this is going to look like in a year, right? So if you're thinking big, you actually start to become okay with that unknown. I had a consult call earlier this week and she, you know, at the end of the call, I said, okay, where are you? Scale of one to 10. She's like, oh, I'm like at an 8.5. I think, I think we should move forward, but I'm at an 8.5. Okay. I said, what would get you to a 10? Well, if I only knew that this was this, whatever this is, was going to work. Okay. It's like, okay, so what is this? Is it it's, is it the actual business, like where we're going with the business? She said, no, I actually think that's a solid, I, I, I'm not, I feel good about that. I said, so is it coaching? She said, no, I totally think you can help me. I said, so what is this? She said, well, it's kind of me. Like, am I going to stay committed? Am I going to, you know, quote unquote, put the work in? She's, I don't, we don't know, right? So that's an unknown and we're going to have to just wait and see and find out. So she's letting that unknown or that uncertainty, unease, get in her way. Big thinkers are like, yes, it's there. They're not denying. That's not like we're not shoving this under the rug, but they're okay moving forward. So that's the third thing. Fourth, S. Okay, the S in trust. S in trust stands for securing support. So big thinkers people who use their brain power to create more time and money. I don't know anyone who doesn't have support. And what I mean by that is there's different kinds of support. Software can be a support. Okay. That's even a support. Um, your family, everybody comes up with their family. Oh, they're so super, super duper supportive. Excellent. Good. But what I'm talking about is support outside of your family, outside of software, the support that another brain or brains bring to the table. And that can look like a lot of things. That can look like um, a mentor. That can look like coaching. That can look like being part of a community. It can look like tons of things. But I don't know any big thinker that doesn't have some outside of the family, outside of technology support. And I think that's a really hard thing for some early on entrepreneurs to recognize because they think they should be able to figure it out on their own. They should be able to YouTube it. They should be able to, you know, they're not, they're smart. They should be able to figure this out. Um, 
and they have this super supportive family. But I'm kind of here to tell you that I don't know anyone that doesn't have some outside support. So that's what the S stands for. Last one, T, the last T in trust. The last T in trust stands for take massive action. Okay, so everyone out there, me included, we're really good at taking passive action. So in the passive action bucket, I put listening to a podcast. Now, clearly I like podcasts because we're recording one and I have my own, okay? But listening to a podcast, reading a book. Clearly I'm into books if I wrote one, okay? So I love books too, but that's passive action. Googling, passive action. Are you taking the steps? Are you making the decisions? So this kind of comes full circle. Are you making the decisions to that you need to take make in order to take the action. And big thinkers are taking this massive action. They're making those decisions. And then they're seeing, they're reaping the rewards of all that because their brain power is really creating what they want to create. All right. I just did a lot of talking. <laughs> but it was amazing. And everything you said makes so much sense. I want to back up to something you said at the very beginning, and that was something that we need to hear over and over as entrepreneurs. This is a long game. This process this does long. not happen overnight. You will go through this over and over and over. Yes. But once you have that awareness of where these doubts are creeping in, that you don't need permission from others, that you are capable. And once you realize that and start taking that massive action, your life will change and you're not meant to do this alone. We you are not that, meant to do this alone. Right. We hear that time and time again as entrepreneurs, but exactly as you said, you know, we like to think we can DIY it. Yeah, all the information's out there and we're trying to piece everything together. And I right. see this all the time when I'm working with clients. Are we implementing the right strategies for you right now at your stage of business? Because all of the strategy works, but you have to be strategic about doing what's best for you in the season of growth that you're in in your business. And right. this is a long game. And I think this is where a lot of entrepreneurs get bored because it yes. is doing the inner work. It is doing the basics over and over and over but something else you said too is you know the past version of us and the current version of us it's comfortable our it brain is. is constantly seeking comfort so why would we do something that would stretch us outside of our comfort zone we're holding ourselves back from the potential and reach and impact that we can have on so many people and i think you know as to the the client story you mentioned earlier you know, we think we need this more training. We need more yes. certification. So we're doing this passive consuming instead of taking action. Our brain thinks that, oh, I'm just doing some market research. I'm going to learn the newest techniques by listening. You have to take action. You have to learn to accept that it's going to be uncomfortable. It is it going is. to be uncomfortable. And that's part of it. But once you can embrace that, it's so freeing. It is. It's it's fun too. Yes. It's fun. It's fun. I like to say, I mean, everything has to be simple, doable, and fun. Yes. We need to have more fun. I mean, isn't that right. what entrepreneurship is? We are meant to live this life on our terms. And I think we give so much of our power away because we're trying to please everyone else and do all the things that everyone else is doing that we forget to reflect inward and figure do. out what we actually want. I just recorded a podcast from my own podcast about um, are your goals really yours yes. or are they oh. someone else's, yeah. right? Are they someone else's? And I think there's, there's a lot of noise out there, right? And it's very hard to stay in our own lanes. And um, we think that someone else knows more than we do in a sense. Um, and I think it's great to like, I'm always bouncing ideas off of people. I love all that. But ultimately, the decision is mine. Yeah. Right? So um, something that happened the other day was that this a client was wanting, she's like, okay, I'm finally going to invest in having someone help me with my marketing. 
I'm going to have some. And I said, okay, what is this person exactly going to do? She's going to do all my social media. She's going to write blogs and she's going to do my newsletter. Okay. I said, but here's the, here's the problem that I'm seeing. Do you have a marketing plan? Like, do you have a strategy that she's going to work off of? Because what you just described is you're wanting her to solve this whole marketing problem, but really you, some of this has to come from your brain, right? You have to kind of direct her and familiarize her with your business and you have to set a plan that she can follow. So it's interesting that sometimes we want to, um, we don't want to, th- we don't want to take up space in our brain thinking about something. So we do want to outsource it. But yet we haven't taken enough time to think about it so that we can outsource it. I don't know why I went off on that little tangent. Oh, because you said you said um, using our own brain power, wanting permission and things like that. So anyway, she's going to do some bigger thinking before she actually hands that off. And she doesn't she's kind of scared to do the bigger thinking. That's really what it's coming down to. She's like, but I'm not comfortable thinking about where I want this to go or how I should position myself or what. I said, yeah, but that's I'm here. I'm here to do it with you. We've got to do that before you get comfortable again and hand it off. Can you recommend some strategies for us that when that fear starts to kick in and we're like, you know what? I just, I'm not giving myself that permission to dream big and we're holding ourselves back. Give us some strategies that we can use to really work through that fear. Yep. So, okay, here's my best strategy, I like to call it. So the best strategy is that you have to be willing to not be so good at it. I call it willing to suck at it. You have to be willing to suck at it, okay? And I have my clients go through an exercise where I say, you need to write down 25 ways that you can fail at this. And she's like, what are you talking about 25 ways that I can fail? And so the client this morning with the landscape company, this would be an excellent exercise for her. 25 ways you could fail. Well, I could put myself out there and no one comes. I could start working with someone and their business isn't any better after they started working with me. I could start to market it, but I'm really targeting the wrong person. So these are all things that could happen that maybe count, you might count as a fail. I would count them as a win or a learn. But in order to get over that fear, you just have to acknowledge what could happen, okay? Then, and the next, another strategy is to ask yourself, what is the worst thing that could happen? 99% of the time, the worst thing that could happen is no worse than not, not trying it at all right? Like not trying at all. So this, the woman that's like, well, I'm 85% there. Okay. I said, so is, is trying this or moving forward worse than just staying where you are, which is worse. She's like, well, staying where I am is way worse. Okay. Then let's go. Right. So you have to, that's another question you can ask yourself. What's the worst thing that can happen? Yeah. And I think the third thing is really to figure out what you're scared of. What is it? Is it fear of success? Is it fear of um, judgment? What will other people say? Is it fear of um, judging yourself? Like you're going to get mad at yourself that you're not good enough, kind of like a little imposter syndrome. Are those any of those real? Like, is that a real thing? They're just fears. They're usually not facts. So getting clear on what you actually are scared of, again, which kind of takes some teasing apart, right? Which is where that other person can kind of, securing the support can kind of come into play. But those are three ways to do it. 25 fails, what's the worst thing that can happen? And what am I really, really, really scared of? Yeah, such great advice. And when you take the time to go deep, to dive into this, that's where you're going to see the massive growth in your business because you're growing yourself. You're learning, okay, where am I holding myself back? Because so often we're the biggest roadblock in our business. There's so much proof out there that yeah. what we want is absolutely 100% attainable to yes. us. 
Yes. It is available to us if we get out of our own way. Andrea, these were phenomenal takeaways. You have dropped so much value. Where can we learn more about you, your podcast, all of the things you're doing? Tell us all the details. All of the things. So I would say um, my two best resources for you are one, go pick up a copy of She Thinks Big wherever you want to. And there's a workbook too that goes with it. Um, and then I, I'll give you a little bonus here. There's a toolkit that is comes part was part of the book and it actually helps you work through some of these same exact things that we were talking about. And you can access that at uh, andrealibros.com forward slash toolkit. Other place, go listen to the podcast, Time to Level Up, found in all your favorite podcast players. And you can head to Andrea's with an S, links with an S.com. And from there, you're going to get a link to the book, a link to the podcast, a link to my, all my social media handles, a link to my website, and also a link to two quizzes. So I've created two quizzes that really, one helps you kind of figure out what is, why aren't you getting done what you want to get done? It's based around productivity. And the other one is, how can I find more freedom in my business? Am I the bottleneck? So I call it the business freedom finder quiz. So if you go to Andrea's with an S, links with an S.com, you can find those quizzes and you can find the book and the podcast and all the things. Absolutely amazing. Thank you, Andrea, for taking time out of your busy schedule to pour into our listeners today. Thanks for having me. This has been super fun. Yes. And until next time, cheers to making the money you want so you can create the impact you desire. Are you loving what you're hearing? Do us a favor and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss an episode. 